So rendering life insurance policies can trigger tax. In this episode, I'm going to address the question, what does cash surrender value mean on life insurance policies? As you learn this, you're going to understand some things that even a lot of insurance agents don't know. So put on your seatbelt. So my name's Doug Andrew. I've been a financial strategist and retirement planning specialist for north of 46 years. I got my insurance license uh, clear back in 1974, as well as a series one securities license, which they don't even offer anymore, but I could sell any stock bond, mutual fund, and any kind of life insurance policy or health insurance policy for that matter that somebody may want. And so in other episodes, I address the question, well, what is cash value? And so you can watch those to have a greater understanding, but I'm going to summarize from a chart I used in another episode, because when we look at insurance, whether it's term insurance, whole life insurance, or universal life insurance, they all have a cost of insurance. We call it COI, which is inherent in any insurance policy with term insurance. What's happening is for a 30 year old, if this was your age over to age 100, the actuaries know that uh, for a uh, thousand 30 year olds in America, we're talking about males, there might be one and a half to two deaths per thousand. In order to have a death benefit of a thousand dollars, if a thousand 30 year olds all put a dollar in a hat, you'd have a thousand bucks to pay out to the one and a half or two that win that year, right? Okay. So that's the actual cost. And the older you get, the more money you have to put into the hat because more out of the thousand remaining are dying. There's a bigger percent. That's the pure cost of insurance. Whole life uh, was designed to pay a level premium, let's say for your whole life. And so that builds cash value or equity. What's actually happening here is you're way overpaying for the actual COI cost of insurance during the early years. And this creates equity so that you can continue paying this same premium for your whole life. You have this excess cash value. So you're overpaying the early years and you're underpaying the latter years. And that's what builds cash value. Generally whole life was designed to calculate, well, what is the least amount of premium I can pay to have coverage for my whole life? Well, when universal life was born, EF Hutton, who was not an insurance company, was the brainchild behind it. And they were doing it for living benefit because this cash value in here, the IRS for over a hundred years has treated it like a sacred cow. It accumulates tax free. You can access this cash value, the smart way, totally tax free. And then when you ultimately die, it blossoms to the death benefit, uh, totally income tax free. Nothing else in the internal revenue code does that. And you can learn in other episodes that that's under sections 72E, 7702, and 101A of the Internal Revenue Code that allows you to accumulate access and transfer your money tax-free inside of a cash value life insurance policy. So the two types of cash value policies are whole life and universal life. But universal life is different in this way. You can use it for death benefit if you want and pay uh, the least premium, sometimes a lower premium than whole life. But when it was, was first introduced, it was designed to put in the maximum that you possibly could. Let's say people wanted to put in a half a million dollars in one fell swoop. Now you can put in a hundred grand, 10 grand, a million. We have people putting in 10 million. When it first came out, you could put in this amount, maybe clear up to here and you just put in one payment and the million, let's say that you're putting in there is not really there for buying the most death benefit. You want the least amount of insurance. And so the IRS says, Oh, well then you only, you can self-insure. You put in a million, if the death benefit is a million or a million, 100,000, then most of it's your own money. Now you're, you've self-insured, but the actual amount at risk to the insurance company is only the remaining hundred thousand. See, that's how universal life can be designed to create a tax free cash cow for living benefit. Well, in 1988, uh, under the Tamra tax citation, which I address in other episodes, what happened is you had to fund it over, over five years. Maybe you, you put in a hundred grand, uh, let's say that this is a max funded index universal life policy. And you put in hundred grand the first year, hundred grand the second year, hundred grand the third year. And so you have, let's say 500 K in that policy. 
Well, if you're now, if that 500,000 qualifies as part of the original death benefit, the IRS said you had to have, which would be a million 250,000 if you're 60 years old. Now you can buy way more life insurance than a million 250,000 with a half a million bucks, but that's not the objective. You want the least amount. So 500,000 of cash inside an indexed UL at the rates of return that I've averaged, that will double every seven to 10 years. So let's say 500,000 doubles to a million, which it has for me, I'm, many times my money doubles about every seven to 10 years tax-free. So the 500,000 doubles to a million. Now the amount of insurance, the cost per thousand is going up, but the amount of, of actual risk the insurance company is covering you for is less because now I have a million. The original death benefit was a million 250. So they're only charging me for the remaining 250,000. Well, the next seven to 10 years, the million doubles to 2 million. That's more than the death benefit. The death benefit now grows with my cash and stays about 5% ahead according to IRS rules. So I have 2.1 million of life insurance now. 2 million of it is my own money. The insurance company is only charging me for the remaining 100,000 and the interest. See, all of this overpayment, if I put a half a million and it's doubling, it's because all of this cash in here is now growing at rates of return of 7 to 10% tax-free. They're just the interest, just a portion of the interest on this cash covers the cost of the insurance, the COI. So have you ever seen an insurance policy that gets cheaper as you get older? Then you haven't seen one designed like this. You're actually self-insuring so that when you have a million or two million, that every million bucks can generate 70, 80, $100,000 a year of tax-free income for as long as you live if you live to be 120. There is not an IRA 401k that I've ever seen that can do the same thing and give you that type of predictable income cash flow. And you're immune from market volatility, from taxes, and inflation actually helps you instead of hinders you. So how does this all connect together? So let me use the metaphor of a bucket, which I've used for many, many years. When I design an insurance policy to be used primarily for living benefits, I compare it to like a bucket where I'm putting money into it. So you have uh, this faucet up here and this is the uh, premium payments that you're putting in there. And as I said before, you want to maximum fund it as fast as the IRS allows and take the least amount of insurance. And so uh, you can put in, let's say uh, $100,000 a year. The second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year. Now, this is maximum funding the insurance contract. You don't have to put in that much. I'm just gonna use this as an example. But if your goal is to be able to put in a grand total of $500,000, you design or structure it to accommodate that much money and the fastest you can put it in if you're over age 50 is, is about 20% a year. And if you do that, the money that's in that bucket as it grows with interest. See, the, the, the compound interest is the other thing that's making this bucket grow. That will be totally tax-free, not only as it grows, but when you start taking income. If you put this whole amount in in one fell swoop in the first year, uh, it will accumulate tax deferred, but it won't be tax-free when you access it. To be grandfathered, to have tax-free income, you have to spread out the funding over five years. With a whole life policy, you have to do it over seven years. So I can get money in faster into a universal life and actually I can get away with less insurance and I get a better rate of return. And that's why my preference is universal life if you're doing it for living benefits. So you put in hundred grand a year for five years. It's actually uh, the first day of the first year. So the last 100,000 goes on, in on the first day of the fifth year, which is technically four years and one day later. So now let's say you have 500 grand in there. Based on actual rates of return, that 500,000 will double to a million and probably in about seven to 10 years. The million then doubles in another seven to 10 years to two million. I actually have people who started out with a half a million, it doubled to a million, then two million, four million, eight million. And they have 8 million now that generates about 800,000 a year of tax-free cash flow. They don't even need that much money. In fact, they're only pulling out 300,000. So it continues to grow even though they're taking out 300 grand a year tax-free. Now, the question that I want to finish addressing in this episode is what does cash surrender value mean? This 500,000, when I put it in there, uh, that, uh, 
is the accumulation value. And the only thing that's subtracted off of that is the actual COI. Do you remember I talked about the cost of insurance? This is like the spigot on the bucket. But see, this is draining out at a certain rate, but the compound interest that you're earning on this is growing so fast when you maximum fund it that it, it way more than covers the cost of the insurance, especially as you get it fully funded. Now that's the accumulation value. During the early years of the contract, maybe 10 years or 15 years, there's a difference between the accumulation value and the surrender value, okay? The surrender value only comes into play. Did you hear that? Only comes into play if you cancel or surrender the policy. That would be dumb in many situations because if my half a million doubles to a million, and then to two million. If you surrender the policy, by then the surrender fee is waived or gone because uh, a surrender charge is only if you cancel the policy in the first 10 years or 15 years, it's all depending. In fact, you can have a writer that waives the surrender charge and you can have access to 100% of your money. But if you take it out, the dumb way, if you surrender the policy, if you get back more than the basis, if your basis is 500,000, you put into it, every dollar more than that, if you surrender it, is taxable. Why would you do that? If I have, uh, if this grew to a million, let's say I have now one uh, million dollars in here, and uh, I surrender it, I have to pay tax on a half a million gain. That would be dumb. What's, what's tax on a half a million? If you're in a 40% bracket like some Californians, you just had to pay 200,000 of unnecessary tax. You, it'd be better to take it out the smart way. You borrow. You could go in and borrow 90, 94%, let's say 90% of that million. You can go borrow 900,000 and the insurance policy keeps going. The loan is not doing payable during your lifetime. In fact, if you do it right, you continue to earn interest on your full million while you're paying a lower interest rate on the actual loan. And so if you borrow, you'd end up with uh, 940,000. If you surrender it, you get your million, but you're only netting 800,000 or maybe 600. See, you have to pay tax. And so why trigger unnecessary tax by surrendering it? That is the dumb way to access money. So I apologize if you feel like you're drinking out of a fire hose right now, but this is why I have authored 11 books. If you want to know more about this, my most recent bestseller is called The Laser Fund. It's a 300 page book and I want to gift you one of these absolutely free. I'll pay for the book. You just pay a $5.95 shipping and handling. And if you go to laserfund, L-A-S-E-R fund.com, pay $5.95 shipping and handling, I'll fire one of these out to you. It has charts, graphs, and explanations if you like detail. If you like to just learn about how does it really work in, in real life, the stories, you flip it over and there's 12 chapters with 62 actual client stories of how to design a life insurance policy to be able to uh, double, uh, to increase your cash value as often as every uh, seven to 10 years and then create tax-free income for as long as you live. That's the benefit of a max funded indexed universal life insurance policy, why would you ever want to surrender something like that?